Hello and welcome back to episode three of the Coach's Corner. My name is Evan O'Neill, alongside head track and field coach Stacy Wentz. Coach, thank you once again. You're welcome. So you guys took the win for both sides, men's and women's, at Fitchburg State for the Jim Sheehan Memorial Invitational this past weekend. Women's team, another incredible performance, 11 total wins. Men's team, a good finish against a tough opponent. So we'll get that in just a moment. And basically, so we're going to start on the women's side, as we always do. Long distance, three different races, a lot of different athletes finishing really, really well. Talk about some of the standout athletes. Yeah, I mean, we pretty much came in there and we knew going in that we have a strong distance program. Um, and that's sort of the core, you know, the heart of our program. Um, one of the big events um, groups that we have and that we're really strong at. And we knew we could dominate and we did. I mean, I think we got first in every single distance event from mm -hmm. the 18 all the way up to the um, 5K. Yep. Um, and that was really, really huge. Um, I think two key performances were I, we had two girls go 1835 and mm -hmm. 1839, right. which were big PRs for both Rachel Avard and Jackie Ryan. Jackie Ryan is only a freshman. <laughs> yeah. um, a lot of people don't realize, you know, her best 5K in high school was 21 minutes. Um, I don't even think she broke six minutes for a mile last year in high school um, in a mile race. And now, you know, she runs less than six minute mile of pace for a 5K on the track. And that's really, really huge. Um, she's starting to come around. Rachel Avard is obviously one of our captains. Um, we're excited um, that that time's coming down. Her main event is steeplechase, and we're mm -hmm. going to get to race her um, Princeton on Friday night in um, a large distance carnival um, invitational. Um, as well as Antonia Pagaluca. I mean, she had some big wins there um, in the 1500. Um, but again, that's not her event, but we were just kind of working on some, some speed. She came out with another college win, so that's that's go. a good sign in the right <laughs> direction. Um, and then Megan Slinsky won the 800, a solid tied 225. Can she go faster? Absolutely. But it was really cold and definitely a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, we're, like I said, we're moving in the right direction, um, and that's really, really huge for us. Definitely. And then the 4 by 100 meter relay team finished first, and then move on to the hurdles. Three different athletes did tremendously. Yeah, I mean, uh, Leah Pol Popolo, um, she ran really, really well in the 400 hurdle. She almost dipped under, you know, 69 seconds, which for her would be huge. We're trying to get in that 68 mark, so 108, mm -hmm. um, and if not lower, hopefully eventually in, the, in 66s and 67s. Um, but again, she won pretty hard, uh, handily um, in that event. Our women's 4 by one pretty close to our school record, considering we probably won by about two seconds. <laughs> Um, in that race and they ran well so we're just trying to get figure out who's going to be in that four by one we still don't know every week it's a different it's a different relay team um, and hopefully in the next week or two we'll have you know a better understanding of who's actually going to be in the event mm -hmm. when we come to conferences right definitely and then with the sprints uh, Greta Scott had an unbelievable finish as a freshman she's been she had an unbelievable winter season yep and Joy Lima pretty much finished right behind her in both races yeah I mean those are those two are training buddies um, Joy's mm -hmm. a little bit better in the shorter sprints then and um, Greta's a little bit better in the longer stuff, but they're working well together, and I think that they'll trade off um, who wins in the 100 um, as we keep going. Um, but again, the, the key is getting both of them faster, That and then our 4 by one can be faster and score really huge points when we get to the conference championships. Mm -hmm, definitely. And then with the throws, um, junior Gwen Sawyer broke the previous record for the hammer throw by eight feet. Yeah, she won again, shot, you know, came out strong, finally hit 12 meters again, which is where she needs to be, and um, starting to come back into, into form there. And then hammer, you know, another four-foot PR, another four-foot school record. Mm -hmm. We'll take it. You know, like I said, she, you know, last week she's still learning the event. She's doing well, um, and hopefully we can get her into scoring, you know, scoring range for conferences, and that'll be big for this team. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, as we sort of wrap up the team, um, you know, we're doing really, really well. Um, also wanted to mention Sarah Iandoni had a big win, a big PR in discus that was really huge for her mm -hmm. and her confidence um but again you know now that everyone's competed in our conference in the um as well as everyone else outside of our conference that's also in our region um what's really big is that you know we only dip down to second in the east region i mean we've never been this high at this point in the season um and you know there's about 20 to 25 teams in our region and to be number two right now that says a lot for this program Definitely. and the direction of where we're going. So everyone's really excited and everyone on campus is excited for us too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And now we move over to the men's team. We were talking a little bit earlier. It was a close one. 
But, I mean, you were missing athletes. Yeah, it was a close one. We were missing a couple of key athletes. And um, we kept home for the weekend um, to kind of work on some th- stuff back home. But um, because of the weather, you know, it was rain, it was right. cold. And, you know, you don't always want to throw your, your sprinters in a situation like that if you don't have to. So mm-hmm. we kept them home. Um, and so, um, you know, with that, we would have won pretty handily. Um, we mm-hmm. did have an unfortunate situation where our men's 4 by one missed a handoff. We'll figure yeah. that out um, right. and make sure that that doesn't happen again as we move forward in the, in the conference, um, you know, heading into conference championships. But, again, it's unfortunate. But we did have some really big key performances that I think we're going to talk about. Yeah, definitely. Start off with the throws. Sophomore Alex Serbo, he's just getting better every week. Yeah. And he had another school record. Yes, this was the one that he's <laughs> been trying for, for two years. Um, the hammer record finally went, front, went down. And yep. so um, that was a great record for us. It was a record that had been out there that had been um, a pretty solid record for this program. And he finally went and hit it. Um, and like I said, he finally got one of the three spins off and stayed in the circle. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and he chucked it out there. Now the key is getting him consistent and stay in the circle when he does three spins and doesn't fall out of it and foul. Right. Um, but again, if he can keep his center, um, and and work on the spin and and you know hold a center of gravity it doesn't fall out then you know it that's just gonna go farther and like I said I think uh, right now goal for him would be 200 feet I mean he does that mm-hmm. he's gonna be an all-american and I think that's eventually what the plan is for him and he's he's getting there it's gonna take some work but um, I think he realizes what he can do now that he's got that extra spin in Definitely. how much farther the ball goes so right. that's really exciting exactly and then now we go towards the jumps both the triple and the high jump and graduate student Eddie Frazier, I mean, you've talked about him yeah. so much in the past, and he had a great meet once again. Yeah, he finally came out first meet in the outdoor season. I told you him and LT were going to trade off this triple jump record. Mm-hmm. Yep, he right. beat him out. <laughs> um, so he's got the record now in his name. You know, I'm excited to see uh, how LT is going to come back and try to beat that again. Um, you know, do we need to improve in that area? Absolutely. I mean, Addy was, you know, top four in the conference um, in triple jump, um, indoor jumping 40. 48 mid um, and really you know his sets are getting to nationals is probably going to take a 50 foot jump he's got the ability he just got to, has to put it together but right. you know he's got some work to do but mm-hmm. you know we came out there with you know wins and we'll take it but he knows mm-hmm. that he's got some work to do yep and then we move now into the sprints junior Darnell Butler he wins the 100 and the 200. He had a great meet. Yeah, so him and Eddie, um, they just, they, you know, they were in great moods when, when they were at this meet. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could have been in a really crappy mood with the rain and the cold, um, yeah. but they were excited to go up against each other, go 1-2 in the 100, and they just had fun, you know, fun coming across the line, you know, sort of egging each other on yep. before they before the, the official blew the gun. Um, and when they came across the finish, I think um, Darnell was celebrating a little bit early, which is why his <laughs> time wasn't so fast. Um, so he learned a great lesson with that. But, again, we'll take the win. We'll take one, going 1-2. One, um, but, like I said, it just shows us the dominance of where we were at this meet. Mm-hmm. And, like I said, hopefully, you know, when we get to a meet like this and we're going to dominate, that we can actually finish off the 4-1. Right. Um, and yeah. so, so that's something, like I said, we're going to learn um, and we're going to move forward with that. But it definitely showed how much we can dominate when we get to meets like that and really how far our program has come. Mm-hmm. This is the first win that we've had at a big meet like this. You know, there mm-hmm. were 15-some teams um, at this meet, and we came, you know, came with wins on both the men's and the women's side. And I, we cannot find anywhere that that has actually happened, mm-hmm. um, especially for an outdoor meet. Um, so that is a really huge step in the right direction for this program. So, right. like I said, we we can't wait till you know next couple <laughs> of weeks. Definitely got to be satisfied with yeah. that. And we finish out both the men's and the women's with the long distance. Sophomore Jeremy Alley Totter. Great meet, finishes, finishes first in the 800. Yeah, not, not a spectacular time, but he negative split. So, um, you know, he only ran 158, um, which is, you know, okay. Um, ideally, he's a lot mm-hmm. faster than that, he knows. But it was a good it was a good opportunity to run 800 in the outdoor season in conditions like this. He's also going to race on Friday night um, at, at Princeton against the big boys, I call them. It's mostly <laughs> D1 meet mm-hmm. um, and, and hopefully nicer weather. And, like I said, for him to be able to negative split like he did, I think he went out in 60 and then split 58 and, you know, just brought it really home, worked on some form, worked on some things. Um, that really goes to show the type of athlete he is and, and some things that he's going to be able to do here in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're looking forward to what he can do this weekend um, down right. at Princeton. Um, and then, you know, we had to p- head to AIC with the rest of the team. Right. 
um, on Saturday. And again, it's going to be a little chilly, um, kind of a weird thing going on with the weather up here <laughs> yeah, in April. But um, like I said, we're going to see a lot of conference and um, regional foes and that will really see where we stack up. And mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a, a big test of where we are at this point in the season when we can go up and battle against schools in our conference and really see how we come out head to head. This is a meet that we need a key on. Um, and it will really give us some some idea of where we really are. You know, mm -hmm. rankings are computer rankings. It's just based yeah. on times. Right. And everyone goes to different meets, and you have different competition that you're up against. But now this is a chance for us to go head-to-head -head all at the same meet. Um, and also, this is where the conference championships are going to be held, you know, three weeks from now. So it's a chance to preview the track get a sense of our surroundings um, and see what we can do. Mm -hmm, definitely. Like Coach was saying, this upcoming Saturday, April 9th, the Yellow Jacket Invitational at AIC. It's going to yep. be a big meet, a lot of conference opponents. Yep. You guys are looking forward to it. Absolutely. So, I mean, it, it's going to be a huge race. So yep. that'll wrap it up for us. Mm -hmm. Episode 3 of the Coach's Corner is complete. Evan O'Neill, Stacy Wentz. Coach, thank you once again. You're welcome. So when we come back next week, we will – wrap up this huge meet, and hopefully we got some great records and some great things to talk yeah, about. Yeah, more school records. That's Definitely. what we want, right? <laughs> All right. Stay tuned. Go Hounds.